For me, RuneScape has always been a sandbox. Not just a game, but rather an adventure for which you have to craft your own path. Of the 17 years I've been playing, I've rarely played without some self-imposed restrictions. Whether this took the form of a time-locked Iron Man account or a simple pure, I've always strove to see which boundaries I could break by limiting which content I can access. And nothing has interested me more than one of the oldest self-limiting account concepts in the game, the humble level 3 skiller. I created my first skiller account way back in 2007. This was back in the good old days, when there was very much no meta to level skills and the game was much more mysterious. I leveled this account reasonably successfully, but eventually caved and turned it into a regular account by leveling combat. It it wasn't until old school release that I returned to my old ways and recreated my skiller main, which to this day is my most progressed RuneScape account. With 2500 hours, the skiller is nearly maxed, with self-funded 99s such as Construction and Herbor. I could go ahead and just finish this account, but instead I've become interested in taking things to the next level. Meet my new level 3 skiller hardcore Iron Man account. Whereas a normal level 3 skiller would rely on lots of otherwise unobtainable supplies from the Grand Exchange. This skiller is limited to just what I can obtain with my own two hands. With the recent release of Poison Dynamite and the now passed pull to add Rings of Recoil to the Magpie's Impling drop table, I am super excited to explore what is possible on this Iron Man. The primary goal of this account will be to obtain some impressive fashion scape by completing quests that are uniquely difficult for a level 3, as well as leveling my Slayer as high as possible. And of course, doing this all without dying. Though I'll likely continue after I eventually die and lose the hardcore status. No trading? No combat skills, no dying. Welcome to Let's Build a Level 3 Iron Man. Hello, and welcome to this, the very first episode of the Level 3 Iron Man Skiller account. I am so incredibly excited to get going, so let's go ahead and get started right off the bat with Tutorial Island, of course. So the only really notable part about doing a tutorial island on a skiller account is there used to be a way to skip the forced 12 melee and 12 ranged combat experience that you get from it, but unfortunately that has since been patched. The only way I know now to actually reduce the amount of combat experience that you get from tutorial island is to do one damage on an alternate account to the rat and then kill it off with two damage from yourself, limiting yourself to eight combat experience instead of 12. It's not incredible, but it's the best that I know of, and honestly, that 8 combat experience shouldn't make a huge difference. I did unfortunately mess up with the melee portion, however, and I let the rat regenerate 1 HP, so I gained 12 melee combat experience. So overall, I wound up leaving Tutorial Island with 12 attack experience, 8 range experience, and 7 magic experience. Not a huge deal in the long run, because I'm hoping to absolutely have to gain no combat experience through the rest of this account, but it is notable anyway. So the goal of this account is actually pretty vague, and I'm not exactly sure where we're going to go with it. I do know I want to complete some difficult quests for a skiller, as well as get my skills really high, including Slayer, but I'm not exactly sure how we're going to get there. I do think that the first really good stopping off point is going to be to unlock Poison Dynamite. If you're not aware, Poison Dynamite is an item released recently that allows you to do damage to an NPC without gaining any combat experience. It has a lot of limitations that I'll get into later, but it'll be key for us for defeating many encounters that will come in the future. Unfortunately, on an Iron Man account, this Poison Dynamite is less than trivial to get. We basically need to grow the Belladonna ourselves, which requires 63 farming. Otherwise, we could purchase the Dynamite, but we also do need 42 woodcutting, 42 mining in order to craft it, which will save a lot of money, and I will be getting those requirements. Also, in addition to this, because the Rings of Recoil from Magpie Implings question passed the poll recently, I will want to get 65 Hunter to be able to catch those as well whenever that update is released. So, that means our primary goals here in the beginning will be 63 Farming and 65 Hunter, and getting a lot of unlocks along the way that will help us a lot. So let's go ahead and wrap up Tutorial Island here, and let's get started on our journey. So of course, like any good Iron Man, the first thing I did after getting off of Tutorial Island is get 5 Thieving. 5 Thieving is such a helpful unlock to get right away because cake stalls are just overpowered in terms of early game food. And actually, cakes will become a staple food for us going forward, probably for most of the length of this account. The fact that they heal 4 HP per bite, giving us 12 HP healing per slot, is really good when we're capped at 10 HP. Thankfully, the starting food that I got from Tutorial Island was just enough to get to 5 Thieving on the men here in Lumbridge, so 
that didn't take too long. After that, I took a quick detour to do Cook's Assistant. I figured, might as well do it. It's nice and quick in the area. And I wanna be doing the first part of RFD as fast as possible here. So that is a requirement for that and getting it knocked out makes a lot of sense. After that, I completed X marks the spot as I wanted to get over to Zaya ASAP. And it's also a really easy quest that gives you an XP lamp. Now, ideally I would have put this on Slayer, but unfortunately I was kind of rushing and in an Iron Man mindset. So I wound up putting it on Agility, which is a good skill if you're a regular Iron Man, but obviously I should have put it on Slayer. This is only 300 experience, thankfully, so it's not the end of the world, but oof, that still hurt. I didn't think it was worth restarting over though. In the long term, 300 experience won't make or break my account, but I'll always have that blemish to remember that I made that mistake. After we got to Corn, the first thing that I did was steal 100 cakes and the chocolate slices and bread that came with it just for some starter food. This got me up to 17 thieving, which is pretty good. These cakes won't last very long, but I'll be back to get some more. I do like stealing these cakes from the Corn Marketplace, as if you get the guard dogs trapped, it's the closest baker's stall to a bank, so banking your cakes is extremely fast. And after that, we went ahead and completed Client of Corrend, which is a bit of a tough one to complete first thing on your account, but I really wanted to get that experience lamp to throw into Slayer right away. Using that experience lamp's 1000 experience, it gets us up to nine Slayer right off the bat. And the reason why I wanna get my Slayer up as fast as possible is so when I get Genie Lamps and Surprise Exam random events, they'll give me a lot more Slayer experience than if I would've started right at one. After I completed the Client of Corrend, I went back to the mainland and I bought some wines because I'm about to go do the Stronghold of security. I also tried to buy the Chronicle and a teleport card, but I didn't have enough money this early on. So that was a little embarrassing. I had a useless Chronicle after this point, but we'll get some cards for it soon enough. Because I was in the area, I did take a small detour to the Draenor Manor and do Ernest the Chicken just for a little bit more GP. And it's also just a really easy quest, so might as well get it done. Then it's time for the Stronghold of Security. This can be a little scary doing this on a level three, but honestly with the wines and the cakes, it's not too bad. You only really take a couple of hits and as long as you eat after every time you get hit and keep your HP topped up, there's no, really no risk of dying here. It's pretty straightforward to go ahead and get the 10k starting cash, and I also went all the way to the bottom and got the boots, but I did drop them as they're not really useful for me and they just will weigh me down. Then it was back over to Varrock, where we went ahead and completed the Varrock Museum quiz for another easy 1000 Slayer experience, putting me up to 13 Slayer right off the bat. This will greatly increase the amount of experience I get from those experience lamps as I mentioned before. If you can imagine me getting a genie lamp right now, if I had one Slayer, it would be worth 10 experience, but with 13 Slayer, it's worth 130. That's a 13 times increase. That is definitely worth it. Now that I had my money from the Stronghold of Security, I did go back to Diango and buy the Chronicle cards. The Chronicle is going to be one of the most crucial early game teleportation items that I have access to, as it provides a quick way to get to the middle of the mainland, as well as a quick way to Varrock. Unfortunately though, I did not have any good route over to my next destination, which is the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Of course, we went ahead and did the agility course there and got up to a quick 10 agility. Really straightforward, nothing really notable to say here. This is ideally something that you would skip on a normal Iron Man with those agility lamps, but because I needed to put them in Slayer, we just had to make the quick trip over here. While I was at the Tree Gnome Stronghold, however, I did stop at the Grand Tree and pick up some groceries from the food shops here. There's a lot of really good early game Iron Man items that you can buy from the shops here, so I definitely recommend stopping when you come here for your agility. I also stopped at the Artie General store as it sells rope and balls of wool, which will need for sheep shearer and many quests down the road. The last thing I did is on my way back to Remington, I went ahead and stopped at a charter ship and started buying some crafting supplies as well as some pineapples. These are both items that I'll be returning to the charter ship to buy a lot of, as I won't have a much better source of crafting experience or super compost materials for a long time. So this will be an extremely valuable resource that I'll be stopping at from time to time. After that, we finally got our first random event. It actually took a couple of hours to get one, which is a bit of a shame, but it was a quiz master. I was hoping for the best, but unfortunately the mysterious package just gave us a flyer. We could have gotten something worth a lot of money or maybe even the stale baguette, which would have been super cool, but unfortunately not this time. So I went back to the Ardoin Monastery and I completed a Monk's Friend real quick. This is a very iconic quest, very early easy game woodcutting experience, of course. Definitely knock this out if you're gonna start woodcutting. Got us straight up to level 13, which is really cool. And of course, going back to Lumbridge, we stop and buy the steel axe from Bob. This is the best axe I'll be able to get for a long time, at least until I get to the woodcutting guild at 60 woodcutting and full Hosidious favor. Before I actually did any woodcutting though, I went ahead and stopped at the Draenor rooftop 
and got my agility all the way up to level 30. You might be wondering why I stayed at Draenor until level 30, and that's because it's actually the same amount of experience per hour as Alcarid, but it's a little bit more consistent because you don't run out of run energy. This wound up taking a little while, but it's pretty much the best next stop for us, as agility will provide a massive run energy recharge boost, and I'll need that as much as I possibly can, because run recharge items are a long way off on this account. After that, I just stayed in the Draenor area and got my fire making up to 30. And now this is probably where you're wondering, am I going to be going to the winter tot right away? And the answer is actually no. Because I'm a level three skiller, there's not really any reason to rush to winter tot. I'm always going to be 10 HP, so whether I do it early or late, it doesn't really matter. And I might as well do it later because the drops get a lot better as your total level and your associated skill levels rise. So while the money would be really nice from the winter tot, it's not worth going to right now. The other reason is I have no transportation methods there except for walking. So when I go there, I'm going to want to stay there for a long time, possibly even long enough to get the Dragon Axe, as that's going to be an end game upgrade for me that can only be obtained from Winter Tot on this account. So that's a long way to say, yep, only 30 fire making for now, no Winter Tot, and that's because we want to complete the Sea Slug quest. On the way back to complete Sea Slug, I did go ahead and complete Plague City as I had all the required items for it now, and it gives a nice mining experience boost. I'll also need access to the city of West Ardoin so that I can go ahead and drop off cats that I'll start raising here pretty soon. So raising cats is kind of interesting to do on a level three Iron Man skiller because obviously I can't use the death runes for myself, but I can actually sell them and they're worth about 10K per cat. So I'll be raising cash just as a little bit of a passive money maker on the side. After I'm able to complete the Artie Easy Diary, which is also quite a ways off, I will be able to sell them for about 20K per cat. So it will really add up over time. The last thing I did before heading over to complete Sea Slug is stop and get Boots of Lightness from the dungeon just north of Ardoin. These are a really easy to get upgrade that will help with my run energy quite a bit. And then of course, finally completed Sea Slug for the massive fishing XP boost. This is a huge quest to complete early on, as early game fishing is terrible, so I definitely recommend completing it. So of course, completing Sea Slug, the natural next step is actually to complete Fishing Contest, another easy fishing quest that gives a nice little fishing boost. Plus this is actually a requirement for the Freeing the Dwarf part of RFD, which is what I've got my sights set on next, as that gives a good amount of Slayer experience when you complete it. After the fishing contest, I took a little detour to the Cather Beast Beach to get just a couple cooking levels for RFD, as I needed 7 cooking in order to make the Fruit Blast required for that first part. Unfortunately, I did not get all the supplies I needed for the Fruit Blast while I was in the Trinome Stronghold before, so I had to make the trek all the way back and buy those, but making the actual Fruit Blast was pretty easy, and now I should have all the supplies I need for RFD Part 1. But unfortunately, it turns out that you actually need 10 cooking to make the Dirty Blast for the RFT part one, which I didn't actually realize. It seems kind of funny to me that you need higher cooking to combine a bunch of trash into a drink than it is to just make the drink the right way the first time. But unfortunately, that's what we need. So I did have to go ahead and take a detour again and realize that I needed to still complete Gertrude's cat to start raising those cats I mentioned before. Thankfully, Gertrude's Cat gives you a decent amount of cooking experience as a reward, so that was enough to push us over the 10 requirement for that first part of RFD. So thankfully, with that in tow, we were able to return back to Lumbridge and complete the first part of RFD, watching the world's longest cutscene and unlocking the freeing the Mountain Dwarf part of the quest. That part of the quest is really straightforward and easy, not a whole lot to say about it, just gathering some items and bringing them to the correct places. I did unfortunately forget my gloves the first time I made the rock cake, so I wasn't able to pick it up and it despawned. So don't forget your gloves the first time you do this quest. So I returned with some gloves and was able to pick up the rock cake. Now normally what you need is ice gloves or to go kill an ice fiend with this rock cake in order to cool it down to give to the dwarf in Lumbridge. But you can also just wait five hours for it to cool down, so that's the option that I took instead. I got a lot of other progress done in the meantime, but it unfortunately means we won't be able to actually finish freeing the Mountain Dwarf for quite some time. Obviously, I don't really have the ability to get ice gloves at this point. I will eventually, though. And I don't want to kill an ice fiend right now either. Now, I did get a few things done while I was waiting for the rock cake to cool down, the first of which was completing Hazil Cult. Now I did do the evil path for this as it doesn't require you to kill anyone, but the good path requires you to kill a level 13 NPC. So the evil path is a much better fit for me, unfortunately. After that, I had to thieve a couple more cakes in order to get 21 thieving for travel totem. But after that, I was able to complete that quest no problem as well and got another extra little thieving boost from it. So one thing I definitely want to keep doing is getting my thieving up. And the next best method for me to do so is fruit stalls in Hosidius, which of course require a little bit of favor. 
So I went ahead and started pushing the plows in Osidius in order to get up to 5% favor where I could start turning in sulfurous compost in order to get favor a lot faster. Unfortunately, I'm not able to afford all of the compost I need to go all the way up to 100% favor at this point in time, but that's okay because the fruit stalls only require 15% favor. So I went ahead and spent the money I had on about enough for 30% additional favor and went ahead and started mining saltpeter after that. Now saltpeter is a little interesting for me because not only do I have to mine it myself to get the favor for Hosidius, I actually will need to come back here and mine lots more in the future in order to create dynamite, as it's one of the ingredients required to craft it yourself. Went ahead and crafted all of that sulfurous compost in order to turn in for the favor and got a couple farming levels out of it too, which is pretty nice. This process got me a little bit of a jump start on farming. Nothing huge, but every little bit helps for sure. After I had that 35% favor, I went over to the fruit stalls and did some there. Not a whole lot just yet, but got a couple of levels running back and forth between the stalls. I'll be doing these fruit stalls up until 45 thieving before I move on to the next method. Of course the goal for now is to get up to 50 thieving so that I have that requirement out of the way for the rogues outfit, but that'll be a little bit of a background goal in lieu of other things that are happening. Then finally, after all of that, I was able to finally turn in my rock cake to the dwarf and get an extra 1000 slayer experience from doing this part of RFD, which is incredible. It put me up to 16 Slayer already. Unfortunately, that is the end of the early game Slayer experience that I can get though, as pretty much all of the other lamps that I could potentially get are locked behind level requirements, and I don't really have access to many other methods to get my Slayer up. So until I get access to some of those other methods, I'm unfortunately going to pretty much be stuck waiting for some random events to help me get my Slayer up. The primary goal here is to get up to 30, as that unlocks the Easy Achievement Diary lamps. And I won't be wanting to get those before 30 Slayer because otherwise I'll have to sit in my inventory. And then unfortunately, this brings us to the end of this first episode of the level three Iron Man Skiller account. I'm just fishing some Kurobwanji here as I want to use it as food for my cat. As if you didn't know, this is the perfect food for raising cats as it's stackable in one inventory space and it is as effective as any other food for your cat, so <laughs> it's really perfect. I'll stay here for a good 3000 Kermwanji or so just to make sure that I don't have to come back at all and I can raise lots of cats in the meantime. But anyway, thank you so much for watching appreciate your time, and I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you like this new series idea in the comments for sure, as I'll be looking for feedback moving forward into the future episodes of this account. But of course, we cannot go without thanking the members who have joined the channel so far. Your support means so much to me, and thank you so much for joining. And of course, a double huge thank you to all those supporters who have joined at that top tier, Mad Hatter, Kitty Line, and Peepo Time. Thank you again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.